organization should be exempt it should logically be exempt otherwise you know you have to group reorganizing somewhere and you have an indirect tax issue in india the threshold should be put but 50% threshold is being speculated you are fine if the fm announces 50% depends upon 50% and in the manner in which the computation happens today there is a ambiguity on the threshold and the manner of computation so if you have 50% or more only proportionate should be taxable if you are saying the whole thing should be taxable then the, pro- the threshold should be 90% so 50% is in relationship to how the taxability should happen now is 50% good that's that's the law of the land today the high court decision copal research on that and that's the law of the land today as per, as per the high court decision but i think you have to link it to the manner of computation i would not say yes or no to 50% unless i know how the computation works yeah. such it's high high time it clarifies uh, such in on the you know two questions one on gst one on service tax on gst the political math i think again and again i keep coming back to uh, to it whenever you know we discuss gst does the government have the political arithmetic or the, the numbers game is the numbers game with the government to pull the gst through do you have the confidence when you meet uh, you know a lot of these delegations you meet the the industry chamber cii fiki and others do you do you think the government can steamroll the gst or get those enough states on board ultimately you need a, a constitutional amendment to be passed by two third majority in parliament you need one half of the states that is around about 15 states to come on board uh, we are still not there yet sachin that 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 last mile consensus is eluding us well uh, if you look at the composition of the uh, the the uh, uh, numbers in the empowered committee one thing is very clear it is not divided on political lines okay, okay that's the biggest first statement and if you look at uh, who are objecting to it the number one is gujarat number 2 is maharashtra but why any any key issue there's a reason there is a reason because any of this consuming state out, out of 29 states in india only five states have the balance of trade in their favor mm-hmm. that's everybody is at their mercy so out of 29 states 24 states are gaining and five states are losing and which are those five five is uh, gujarat yeah. maharashtra tamil nadu um, i think haryana yeah. and uh, karnataka karnataka yes okay they are losing and uh, and uh, that's why i said there is no political line Th- those people think that they lose cst revenue in in a net cst revenue they are objecting to it and that's why this 1% additional tax over and above gst came in the picture now the question is when you are when the the bill is presented in the parliament there is no issue when you go to rajya sabha what would happen now if you look at uh, the statements of the congress they say that the parentage of gst bill is ours we have introduced gst you have just carrying for order reform and in view of this if it is passed the credit will come to us also so if that is the situation there is nothing to worry congress has to support this and not only that in this scenario if congress oppose congress oppose this bill it may create more problem for those the, the party rather than getting some you know positive points so in my view this is what so so you clearly need that the two main parties uh, in the country today to come together then it is true this. but but sachin let's move towards the technical side of it leave aside the political part hmm. how is the structure looking from whatever we are seeing now a dual gst structure hmm. uh, you have some states are saying that we want to levy some separate tax on on petroleum products hmm. or alcohol and all of these things Uh, in between uh, you saw a newspaper advertisement uh, uh, by by certain uh, group saying that that this should be kept out of gst right. and and you know so appeals are already being made right. by the by the powerful lobbies on what needs to be right. in the gst ambit what needs to be outside gst ambit where are we on that or is it still a maze see uh, if you look at uh, assuming that once it is uh, sailed through the parliament and mm. the rajya sabha mm. and it come to the state for approval so 50% of states are required as of now states like kerala is a congress ruled state are waiting in wings to push gst because they think that by gst introducing gst they will have a couple of thousand crores more in revenue yeah. coming to them and so many states are waiting for gst they think that it will definitely sure. going to push up their revenue so i don't think that the passage would be a, an issue and not only that if we look at the bjp respective of whatever reverses they had in delhi if this is not past did this situation it can never be passed in the future because but no such a structure i think yeah. that's the key point yeah. are we going to have a dual gst structure seems yes mm-hmm. then second question the rate 
Right. Then third question, which are the items that you're going to keep out or you're, or you're going to give some powers to the state, some special powers to state, yeah. alcohol, petroleum, three yeah. questions such and specific. So, so this is more or less the architecture is clear. Huh. The issues which are debated is, is limited. Yeah. Now, for example, now the issue which is yet to be decided is one of the most important issue, what is the REIT. Now, they have, there are different, uh, uh, you know, permutation combination which is suggested, articulated by different uh, uh, period. Mm. Finance Commission said that it is 12 percent, Kirk mm. Ramit is at 20 percent. Mm. And the latest is NIPFP come back and said that it could be ranging from 18 percent to 27 percent, mm. right? End of the day, if you have to sell GST, it can nothing more than 22 percent. Mm. So, since the constitutional amendment is envisaging a banned rate, mm. so there could, there may not be a situation where every state have a uniform GST rate. It could be a 20 to 22 percent ban. Not 27, the sum of 27 will not be sold. It will not be sold for one reason that... Uh, Inflation. It would, any, any fiscal uh, increase in the tax would generate in, in, uh, inflation in the, in the, in the, in the uh, short term and that, that so it will, it will settle down and that is given. That so, so right now Sachin, am I right in saying that we are caught in the nitty gritties and that maybe, maybe the larger structure is clear, we are going to have a dual GST structure, a 20-22% yeah. rate, hopefully everyone is going to settle down but right. then we are working on these nitty gritties, what comes in, what stays out, you know, who taxes so petroleum, even, who taxes alcohol and so on and so forth. That is clear, now it is very clear there is a near consensus or unanimous in the in the board committee that alcohol should be kept outside. Whatever maybe the reason we will not debate <laughs> the point. So it Does is that kept affects outside. you Girish by any chance? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> but so, that's a, I agree with him. That's a unanimous consensus. Consensus. Now, so there is no issue that. about it. Petroleum was a uh, matter of uh, uh, contention. Yeah. Petroleum, it is decided that uh, it should not be kept outside the constitutional amendment, but it will be kept outside the initial draft. Okay. So as and when GST council feel that this is, we are ready to even uh, pull in petroleum products, mm. then they would introduce it as mm. and when it's a question mark. Mm. And why? Because petroleum itself as a single item is contributing average 40% okay. of the total revenue collection of the state. So they don't want to put all the eggs in one basket. They want to see that where, how is it sure. behaving. Huh. So it may come in the future. Not only that, they also expect that most of the petroleum product is input for manufacturing and or services or whatever it is. And if that input credit is already given, then a huge chunk of the, the revenue from petroleum today, which they don't have, they don't allow any input credit, would vanish. Okay. So it would be carefully, they will they will uh, check out this plan. So that is kept outside. Then it is also clear that entry tax is going, LBT is going, yeah. Octro is going, mm. Cessus are going, mm. entertainment tax is going. Mm. What is going to remain is that those municipal council or local self-government charging some of the, levying some of the taxes locally. Okay. Other than entertainment tax, maybe some of those maybe uh, taxes which, uh, which are specific to that particular uh, local self-government would yeah. remain. Yeah. And otherwise, almost about 12 plus uh, tax legislations are integrated with GST. Such a final word on GST. You think April 2016 feasible, not feasible? I would believe that if this... Probability. Budget, yeah, if this budget, uh, if the amendment is through, we would see the... No, no, if... What is the probability that GST goes through? No, I'm very clear. GST? If it is, the amendment is through in this budget, then 1st April is a very high possibility. No, that's a big if the, adjust, if the adjust, amendment is not through in this, it may go up another 6 months delay. As a corporate one. Gayatri, you know, uh, how do you all look at GST? How, how big a reform it is? It's, it's being sold as the biggest tax reform since independence. How big is it for corporates? It certainly is a major, major reform and one that will uh, involve a change of various calculations and our numbers and everything. But again, you know, sitting on the fence, wondering when or where, then you, you also make projections after all. It's not just the writing up of your accounts. It's just so difficult uh, to make those projections reasonably uh, when, you know, you're always wondering whether this is just, uh, as we know it, this has been... Yeah, whether your indirect tax liability... So many go, years, go, yeah. yeah. Who's going to bear and whether petroleum is or in or out? Okay, there is some amount of, uh, you know, clarity now, but still. Yeah. So, yes, it, it is very major. Corporate tax reliefs, another big speculation right now, whether there will be a cut in the corporate tax rate. 
Gayatri, you are expecting the the highest rate to go down 30 percent, uh, or at least the surcharge to be taken off? In all honesty, I don't expect any reduction if one goes by, you know, what's happened in the recent past. I also want to say that, you know, I don't think corporate India keeps hankering after tax exemptions and tax holidays all the time. Mm. I think what's more important is there's a reasonably low, as low as possible tax regime, but one which is stable, uh, which will help them understand, plan, uh, project and conduct business without all the time wondering as to how a present law is going to be interpreted by the tax authorities, what the courts will decide and what might be implemented or might not be implemented but deferred after two years. I mean, it's all of these aspects which are more troublesome. Girish, again coming back to numbers, does the finance minister actually have the leeway for the tax reliefs, people are asking for dividend tax uh, relief, people are saying uh, scrap DDT, uh, it's being speculated there will be some corporate tax rate uh, rejig and so on and so forth. Uh, even to scrap surcharge, which we've now had for many years now, Girish, uh, does the finance minister really have that leeway to reduce the rate? When when this year, the collections have not been as uh, buoyant as, as the projections. See, the thing is, somewhere things have to start. And things can start in two ways. Falling interest can trigger demand, which is what hopefully will happen. Real estate will come back, auto will come back, and then hopefully the whole cycle will turn around. Or tax incentives can trigger demand. What this country needs is a combination of both at this point of time. So unless you don't have tax incentives, you will not make in India a reality, say, say, say for example, 200% R&D. What's the point of having 200% R&D if you have to pay MAT? What's the point of having extra depreciation if you have to pay MAT? So it's an inconsistent policy. You're incentivizing, you're taking it back. You want to encourage exports, but you want to take it back as MAT. You want to encourage infrastructure, you want to take it back as MAT. So that's a case to promote certain sectors. So tax incentives are important. If tax incentives work, hopefully demand will pick up. Hopefully jobs will get created. If jobs get created, economy will turn around. People will consume more. Such as GST will also get more taxes and people will go out and spend and collections will be better. So it's a one year time so lag. Irish, it, it's, it's a Republican uh, slogan. Cut taxes, put money in the consumer's pocket. Absolutely. And hope. And hope. In this one year, what do you do? You can't have a deficit. So in this one year, you have to rely on other means of finance. There's a strong stock market. Think different. Think out of the box. How are you going to raise money? Think better compliance. Why should 6 lakhs crore plus be lie in disputes? Resolve that. Collect 3-4 lakhs from that. Move fast with the dispute machinery. Move fast with stock demands. Get better compliances. You know, this property thing, like let's say uh, that withholding or that 1% tax yeah. on property or the integration with the stamp office. How do you actually go out and collect the money? Yeah. Go out and collect the tax. That's the need of the art. Girish, so I'm a, India, I mean, uh, a slew of announcements have been made. Correct. I think uh, on the five ideas that you've given uh, for the FM and article you wrote for Tax Sutra, I think uh, you've gone big on, on, a, on a few of the points you mentioned right now, but Make in India comes first. What, what are the uh, couple of things that you are expecting on the Make in India front from the finance minister in the budget? Uh, uh, are we talking of, again, uh, those uh, exemptions that we have or had, like the backward area exemption, you invest in particular sectors, are we co going to create some economic zones? Uh, is it going to be SEZ part two? Or, or is it going to be something completely different that, that uh, maybe borrowing an example from some other com uh, countries? Are we, are we going to see, see. something in the, on the lines of UAE, uh, uh, some special zones or, or something else like that? See, Make in India has two parts. One is tax incentive, second is the whole regulatory part of it. The tax incentive part, yes, why should Bombay not be a financial hub? Why should we not have a earmarked area in somewhere in Bombay, which where we can tell private equity, come here and invest in the whole region from India? Why can't we make out-of-the-box thing and really create employment and create zones? It can be manufacturing zones across the country, smart cities and Financial all. centers. Tax incentive is one of them. You can give tax holidays, tax relief, so on and so forth. What is more important is regulatory reform. For Make in India to happen, your regulatory process has to be streamlined. You can't go from pillar to post getting approvals. You have to have single window clearances. You have to have one-stop approvals. You have to have efficient approvals. You need to have quick approvals. You need to talk about labor reforms. You need to talk about land reforms. There are lots of things. And, 
and finance minister saying something in the budget doesn't necessarily mean the states have to follow that. So how do you align your states with the make in India uh, philosophy? And you have to have a buy-in from them as well. And you know, but one thing is very good. Have you ever seen in this country states competing for investments? How many uh, vibrant things you saw this time? Vibrant yeah, you, Gujarat. You, you are having at least half a dozen Rajasthan, states. Rajasthan, really West Bengal also had a oh, absolutely. invest in West Bengal. Oh, yeah. So if you see states competing and if you support the states who are competing through fiscal incentives, then I think Make in India can be a reality. Yeah. Gayatri, is, is the tax incentive, uh, for, for you Make in India is going to be more about tax incentives when you decide which state to invest in, where do you want to put up your, your plant? Uh, Certainly, oh, I mean, I think I think any company would have that largely in mind. But I do believe that Make in India is not just about taxes, as uh, Girish said. I think uh, it really is supposed to represent efficiency, productivity, and so on. And uh, in terms of you know all that is expected, I think Girish covered them all. There's only one thing I'd like to add. In the Make in India campaign, one of the key elements is the Indian himself. The Indian who's going to make that happen and the Indian who's going to consume it. So I think in all of these reforms and when you spoke about the tax uh, rate cut, I don't know about corporate tax rates.